I'm uh, Mark Evans. I was a captain in the Coldstream Guards. Um, I left in 2008 suffering from PTSD. I was an archaeologist at university um, and I am now the coordinator for the Waterloo Uncovered project. Charlie Foynette. Um, I'm a major in the Coldstream Guards and I'm one of the coordinators I suppose of this archaeology project. I was an archaeologist before I was a soldier. Um, I studied archaeology at the University of London um, and retained a great deal of interest in both military history and, and archaeology. I was there at the beginning when Charlie came up with this idea to take a few soldiers to, um, to Waterloo and um, I've been there helping to try and make that happen and expand it. Waterloo in general has long been of interest, but Waterloo holds a particularly important place for my regiment. And it seemed appropriate, with the anniversary coming round, that we should get more involved with what is happening um, on this great battlefield. As a Coltrane Guard, I have a, I have a, a connection as, as an entire regiment, particularly to, to Hougamont. I mean, it's one of our most famous battle honours, um, and you, you learn about it from as an officer and as a soldier from day one, week one. And the defence of Hougamont is a source still of enormous pride in the regiment. It was an action that required immense steadiness, courage, commitment, um, and it was an incredibly close run thing. It was a very, very bloody day. Um, and the regiment played a, an important part in what was a battle that has gone on to define modern Europe. My name's Tom Mollo, um, and I'm heading up communications and fundraising for the Waterloo Uncovered project. So I served in the regiment for five years. And so as any member of the regiment, Waterloo is an incredibly important battle honour and it's sort of become part of the folklore of the regiment and what it stands for. We place such store by our collective memory uh, and by our sort of familial interest, if you like, with our history, that it's as, it's as if you've joined a family. So when we talk about Waterloo, we talk about us, we, what we did at Waterloo, uh, as if in a way, certainly spiritually at least, we're descended from the people who really did fight there. Tony Pollard, who's obviously heading up the, um, the archaeology side of the project, I mean, he describes this as being a revelationary and revolutionary approach to the way archaeology is, is conducted, um, particularly because, it, one, because of its collaborative nature. So we've got people from different countries, different sides of the battle, if you like, coming together. But we've also because we are a charity who sit in the middle of the project, we've also been able to invite the best people we can find to come and take part. Um, and because it's Waterloo, it's a fantastic battlefield, people are really interested and want to be on board. I'm Dr Tony Pollard and I am the director of the Centre for Battlefield Archaeology at Glasgow University. And I'm the lead archaeologist on the Waterloo Uncovered project. Initially the project is focused on Hougamont, and we have an obvious link there with the Coldstream Guards. But I think our mutual aspiration is that this will be a long-term project and we will take in the entire battlefield, not necessarily looking at every inch of it, but certainly looking at areas stretching across the landscape. I'm Dominique Bosquet, I'm a Belgian archaeologist. I'm working for the Walloon region, so I'm the Belgian authorities' representative. I think that the, the main thing that archaeology can, can bring to the understanding of the battle is a, it, it's a kind of objective data. Uh, because we know a lot, there are thousands of pages written about the battle, but all these pages uh, have been written by guys who, who had a, a personal point of view, of view about that. We're going to do some initial geophysics and survey work and some exploratory work as well. So to give us an idea of, of the area, um, we're lucky that we've got the guys from Ghent University involved and be using their equipment. I'm Philip de Smet from Ghent University uh, from the Department of Soil Management and the thing that we do is use geophysical techniques to visualize what is present beneath the surface of the ground. We look at electrical and magnetic variations in the subsurface to try and see if any human activity in the past have, has left behind its traces. We look into the soil and map any variation that is present there. Stuart from um, LP, again, he'll be managing all the data and managing the data is going to be a huge, huge, huge task. Not just because there's going to be loads of it, but because we're working with a, with a number of people from a number of countries, different languages, 
different systems. And that's what Stuart's going to be. Stuart's going to be masterminding and managing. My name's Stuart Eve. Um, I've got a PhD in archaeology, uh, and I specialise in database management and geographic information systems, which is basically digital mapping. So on this project, I'm going to be collating everyone's data, putting everything on a map, and then hopefully sharing it all over the internet so the world can see it. We have got absolutely stacks of information about it. There's lots of old maps, there's lots of old records, um, there's all sorts of eyewitness accounts and everything. But what hasn't really been done properly is an archaeological excavation actually on the site. Given that Waterloo was only 200 years ago, we do have written accounts, we have a huge wealth of written accounts. But it was Wellington himself who said that writing the history of a battle was like writing the history of a ball a ball being a dance, obviously. And what he was saying was that it's a very mobile, very confusing, very rapid affair. And for anyone at any position within that maelstrom of activity to be able to get an overview of what's happening is impossible. Everybody's impression of the battle was different. You're in a big, roiling cloud of powder smoke. Anybody who's ever seen a musket fired will realise just how much smoke is generated. You know, within a couple of minutes, you can see nothing. Um, so the battle for most must have been a, a series of fleeting impressions of things happening through mist and through smoke. Very, very difficult to keep tabs on the overall big picture. A soldier would only know what was happening on his immediate left or his immediate right, and you've literally got the fog of war with all that black powder smoke, big white clouds of smoke hovering over the battlefield. So despite the fact that we have loads of eyewitness accounts from soldiers from both sides and the various armies within both sides, it can be confusing, and how much reliance can we put on it? And what archaeology brings, theoretically, is a degree of objectivity, because what we're looking at is the evidence that that battle has left in the landscape. So what we hope archaeology will do is kind of throw a new light on some of the major events and parts of the battle and perhaps um, change our understanding of why things happened uh, and ultimately why um, battles around places like Hougoumont and Le Haysant um, went the way that they did. Everybody has heard of Waterloo, especially now that we're in the 200th anniversary year. And for me, it, at my point in my career, this is a real, a real peak, a real opportunity. So I'm really quite excited that we've brought together this team of people who are very good at what they do. It's like a dream come true, really. I'm a bit like a kid in a toy shop at the moment. I've got all of this technology, all of these people that know how to use it and want to use it, and the battlefield of Waterloo. So uh, I, think, I think as far as my field within archaeology is concerned, conflict archaeology, this project stands to be a flagship. So what started off as a, a few people in a minibus going to do something for a bit of fun has now turned into a multinational effort um, with a huge amount of public and international support. We start with one year at Hougamont and then there, there is the rest of the battlefield which we would like to explore as well and fill in that complete picture of what actually happened at the Battle of Waterloo.